going to address every tomato issue out there right now. But what I'm going to do is talk about some of the tomato issues that we're seeing and that we're seeing a lot of. So I want to talk about septoria leaf spot because here in Northeast Missouri, we've got that really bad. And it's probably bad all around the state because Missouri's had a lot of rain. Here in Adair County and pretty much most of Northeast Missouri, we had around 14 to 16 inches throughout much of our region in a 30-day period. It's only been in the last week that we've not had much rain. Now, it did rain on Saturday night here in Kirksville, rained pretty good, got quite a bit of rain in parts of um, Kirksville and Adair County. But for a 30-day period there, it rained and it rained and it rained. And disease uh, really built up and got bad and spread. And here we have septoria leaf spot. And anytime somebody walks in or calls and says they have spots on the leaves, I mean, that's what it is. So this is what I'm seeing a lot of here in Northeast Missouri. And the photo on the right is what a you know, pretty severe case looks like. And you can see that the leaves, um, after they turn yellow and get spots, then they will turn brown, they dry, they get crunchy, they fall off, and the plant does not have very much foliage. So you see a lot of tomatoes there that have no foliage. That's not good because issues are going to occur or can occur when the tomato plant does not have enough foliage. But this is what can happen when your tomato plants do not have enough foliage. The tomato fruits can get yellow shoulder. That's where the tops of the tomatoes or the shoulder of the tomato turns yellow. And if you cut one open, you may find a hard white core. Now, people have asked me, can I still eat these tomatoes? Is it going to, you know, is it bad? Is it going to hurt me? The answer is they're fine to eat. They're not going to hurt you. Um, just cut it out and eat what you can of that tomato. If you are a market gardener or a commercial grower, please don't try to sell these. They're not going to sell well at a farmer's market. So you're going to want to use these as canners or just use them for yourself. Okay. But that is the result of not having enough foliage on tomato plants. Now, let's talk about control. So every year, this is what we recommend people do for disease control in tomatoes. We'd like you to have you know, several inches of straw around every tomato plant. I also put it around pepper plants and eggplants and also under my cucurbit plants like the pumpkins, watermelon, cantaloupe. And then we wanna make sure that every tomato we, we are growing is staked or caged and that any leaves that are touching the ground are removed. So we don't want any leaves touching the ground or very close to the ground because the fungus that causes septoria leaf spot and also early blight, everybody that grows tomatoes has probably heard of blight. Those, the fungus that causes those problems is soil borne. And if you don't have any straw or cover on the ground around your tomatoes, then when it rains hard or even when you water, it splashes that fungus up onto the lower leaves. And if it keeps raining like it did here uh, in the, you know, for 30 days, it just, it spreads and it spreads up the plant and it's, you know, it spreads to all your tomato plants. And, you know, even this year, straw, straw is not helping this year. And then the ground got really wet and then we were pulling away straw to help the ground dry out. So these are the things you want to do in a normal year, you know, and people did them this year, but it just got so bad with the rain that you know, even these things have not worked uh, well this year. A daconil fungicide is a preventative fungicide you can use. Uh, this is what we recommend for tomatoes. Please read the label uh, before you use it, but this is what um, is recommended as a preventative. Right now, this isn't gonna do you any good. So spraying daconil on a tomato plant that looks like this one on the right is, is not going to do any good at all. And I will admit, this is my tomato plant. So even I have lots of problems and I did not spray even one drop of fungicide on any of my tomato plants because it rained and it rained and it just wasn't going to do any good to apply fungicide and the next day get, you know, get washed off. So I didn't apply anything and my tomato plants look like this and I am having, you know, as you can see, all kinds of issues. Now going on to another problem I'm having um, that is stink bugs. And fruit that is affected by stink bugs will have little um, spots like you see in these photos. So the, the photos, they're in the middle, the, the, top, the top right and the middle one. Those are my tomatoes that I took photos of this morning. The photo in the lower right, um, that was a photo that came in several years ago, uh, maybe from one of my colleagues that's on now. 
uh, from somewhere in the state. And th these are all photos of stink bug uh, damage. So the stink bugs have a piercing sucking mouth part and they pierce that mouth part into the tomato fruit and they suck out um, the, the lycopene uh, or the red coloring that uh, makes the tomato uh, red. And this is what um, your tomatoes will look like. So how do you get rid of stink bugs? Well, you can catch them, try to kill them. I've caught a few and smashed a few. You could spray them off with water, but that may not be you know, a, a real great idea because the more water you put on the leaves, the plant, the more the fungus is going to spread. So you know, it, it can work, uh, but you know, just be aware that it does spread fungus. And then insecticides, and I have uh, two here that are labeled for stink bugs, uh, pyrethrin, which is derived from chrysanthemum flowers, and then uh, seven uh, active ingredients, carbaryl. So both of those are labeled for tomatoes and labeled for stink bugs. And then always read the label before applying any insecticide. And we are still seeing some people with herbicide uh, damage. You know, most of this occurred weeks ago when our row crop farmers were spraying uh, herbicides on soybeans and still, you know, still seeing that uh, in, in some uh, plantings. And, you know, we get, we get questions. People want to know, you know, is that disease? Is that herbicide? You know, what is it? So if it's really curled and gnarled and really just distorted looking, chances are it is herbicide uh, drift uh, on your tomato plants. They're very sensitive as are grapes. So I have seen some grape uh, vines with herbicide injury to them also.